Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be doing How to Draw a Horse. Now, a number of years ago I did a How to Draw a Horse video, and you know what? It probably was not my best work. Uh, always sort of regretted that one in terms of the quality of the final piece. So I'm back to the scene of the crime to see if we can do a better job. Uh, I've put a square here to give you a sense of the size. This square is three and a half inches uh, on all sides. That works out uh, to almost exactly nine uh, centimeters. And then I put it just uh, across here, is right down the middle. And we're going to begin by putting down a basic guideline for sort of the tip of the nose all the way up to around uh, the top of the head and then back down uh, across the uh, back of the neck. So you see it starts down here in this lower left hand corner with this line, the sort of curved line of the tip of the nose touching right on that line. It hits a little bit of an angle here and then uh, pretty much a diagonal line heading sort of sloping maybe inwards just a touch until you get to the top of the head which it almost touches that top line. Uh, just a gentle rounding curve there and then going straight down there to the back of the uh, neck. Let's go ahead and finish things off by drawing the uh, bottom bottom of like the jaw and then heading up all the way around uh, almost to the, um, I don't know, the extent of the back of the head there. Okay, so you see this line is different. It sort of breaks into three parts, rounding here up to a point, um, I'd say maybe uh, uh, about a third of the way from that center line. Then it really straightens out quite a bit here. And then you get an angle that curves all the way down, almost like a large letter J or something. And then you can pay attention to that line over there in terms of the placement. Uh, this might actually curve back in a touch more as I look at it. Um, and now I suppose it is time to draw the, well, we're going to draw the nostril and then also the eye. Now we're going to refine these shapes quite a bit later on, but as a sort of a placeholder, notice the location of this uh, oval kind of egg shape here, slightly closer to that line than it is uh, to this line. And then the placement of the eye, again, if you had that square in there to begin with, it's not dead center, it's a little closer. Also that line could help you in terms of the placement. Uh, of the eye. And uh, we really have to do just a few more things here. Let's do the ears uh, and then maybe after that well, a couple of more guidelines and we'll be done. And again we're going to be refining this quite a lot later on but uh, notice how straight they are. They almost have a sort of column uh, cylinder type of a shape. Uh, the horse's ears pointing just a little bit forward uh, and in terms of the um, proportions uh, I suppose make sure that uh, say from here to here that this line uh, is certainly not any longer or uh, extends any further than the space between those two lines uh, to get the proportions right and like I said I'm going to do just a uh, two or three guidelines right here in the middle to help us with placing some of the muscles uh, later on. Okay, so it may look like I'm uh, intending to draw the harness or something like that, but this is not going to be a horse with a harness on. These are really just guidelines to help you sort of divide the head up into different uh, areas as we work on the muscles later on. I decided to go ahead and add the mouth down here very close to this lower line you can see compared to that uh, upper line. And then just a little suggestion of the, not really the eye, but kind of the uh, structure above the eye, uh, which is pointing off in that direction on the other side of the head. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in now. We're going to do some real-time drawing and begin to refine uh, this area of of the uh, one eye that is uh, turned toward us. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to get an indication of the uh, upper eye lid. And uh, I suppose different breeds of horses have different eye shapes. Uh, I consulted a number of different photographs and so forth. This might actually be a, <laughs> a blend of different breeds, to be honest. Um, but uh, one of the reasons that I think we react so emotionally to horses is that their eyes are surprisingly human-like uh, in a lot of ways in terms of the structure. Um, the iris area is uh, much larger, you know, to the point where you barely uh, see the whites of the eyes, I think, unless a horse is startled. Uh, you don't see the whites of the eyes, you just see this gigantic iris. And then there are eyelashes, at least with some horses, that again, strikingly human-like. Um, but they don't cover the entire uh, upper eyelid. They seem to start somewhere around the middle and uh, spread off uh, toward the right in, in, of this drawing anyway. 
And then, um, depending again on the horse, uh, I don't know if it's the age or <laughs> if they just have uh, the sort of bag-like structure um, beneath the eye, again, quite human-like. This line here that uh, is really a structural line, you could even uh, have it link in here with the, uh, the structure at the bottom uh, of the eye. And a lot of this is going to kind of vanish into uh, shading later on. But let's go ahead and give a nice large um, pupil to this eye. And if you want to, you could go ahead and even shade things in a little bit there. Now behind the eye, at least on some of the photos I saw, was a sort of a, a muscle or skeletal structure that can cast a bit of a shadow over here. In fact, there might even be like a secondary area back here. Um, you know, horses uh, is almost like a field of study unto, unto itself, and uh, people who get into it will, I'm sure, study the skull and uh, all of the muscles, and, and that's really the way to do it if you want to become a master. But in terms of getting started, this video hopefully is a good way of uh, dipping your toe in the water. Uh, now, in terms of what we can do uh, while I have the camera focused in here, maybe not so much, but what I'm going to uh, start to do maybe is erase away uh, that guideline, make it less distinct, because like I said, um, these guidelines are showing us where to do a lot of shading later on and uh, you don't really see such a clear line except, you know, with maybe cartoony styles. You wouldn't see such a clear line right there uh, on the side of the for uh, horse's uh, nose. Let's refocus now to the snout. Is that the right way? The, <laughs> the tip of the nose and we're going to get into drawing the nostril which I think has quite an interesting shape. All right, now the uh, nostril of a horse really has a sort of an interesting um, shape that reminds me a little bit of some seashells, the way uh, it winds in on itself. So there's this structure out here and then it's starting to kind of curl in beneath. Uh, I wonder if um, part of this structure relates to the horse needing sometimes to pull in really huge amounts of air through uh, the nostril all at once. You do s sense that the nostril itself is larger and more flared uh, than with a lot of other um, animals. You might have noticed that I raced away a little bit here. Depending on the lighting, uh, this area back here quite defined in a linear way. This area maybe not so much uh, as the air is sort of shooting in there um, from the front of the horse's face. I'm putting a line in here uh, that uh, given lighting from above, you're definitely going to see a little bit of a um, sort of a rim that goes all the way around there. Um, let's start to refine because you've got this nostril here. The other nostril over on this side is pointed away a little bit. You can't really see it so well and what happens is you get a line coming down like so and that is uh, kind of um, connected to a second line like this as if the, no the nostrils are pointed outward in two um, opposing uh, directions. And then we can refine this area of the, uh, I guess it would be the upper lip, um, by erasing a little bit away what we had there before and creating a more uh, complex um, contour. I'm going to erase also here so as to have the lower uh, lip not be exactly the same line, right? Sort of suggest that by the contour. And this lower lip uh, right here ha tends to have a little bit of a structure underneath it. I'm not sure if it's muscle uh, or um, just uh, flesh or something like that, but there's a little bit of an area down here that probably is mostly going to be covered in shade as we continue to work on this. Now, uh, the, uh, the lower, the, at the tip of this edge of the mouth, it ten tends to curve down a little bit, and then that's where you can start refining a little bit over here. And that's why I put that line in here, because there, you don't actually see this line so much. There's not like a line on the face, but there, it, this helps delineate the idea that there's a structure down here that is separate. I mean, it just sort of helps in terms of organizing your shading and so forth later on. If you think of the 
uh, head is being broken into these sort of three different areas. I'm going to hold off on the shading that goes in here across the um, sort of bridge of the nose or the snout of the horse, but what we could do is uh, take this quite straight line and maybe have it curve out just a little bit more until it connects back into this larger structure now. The, I, the, uh, because of my focus of the camera, you can't see the rest of that line. Um, but l let's just stop with all of that stuff for now, uh, because it all, uh, from here on it turns mostly into shading. Uh, stuff. And then uh, I'm going to move on to uh, drawing the ears and maybe some of the mane. So as I said, the uh, horse's ears are, are quite unusual, it seems to me, uh, in this sort of column or cone-like cylinder shape. Uh, the one that's turned away from us, I'm, I'm dividing into uh, uh, separate areas. This is the interior of the ear. This would be sort of the back structure, the supporting back structure. And if you want to, you can refine this shape a little bit uh, by curving this line uh, and having it almost sort of tilt back in, a, in an elegant way. Um, and then the similar thing happens, of course, uh, to this ear except curving in the opposite direction. Again, different breeds of horses maybe are going to have different ear shapes. Um, but let's go ahead and erase. I'm going to just erase all of this guideline. Be gone, guideline! You are of no use to me now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and add a secondary line here that comes way down and uh, shows this sort of structure of the, um, yeah, the sort of column that opens out um, for the uh, sounds to come into the uh, horse's ears. Um, there is a secondary area down here I saw on some photographs, a sort of a, uh, musculature down here at the base of the ear. And that may even go a little further down into a, a support structure beneath it. And, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of shading later on, but let's go ahead and move on now to drawing the mane. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was talking about the sort of emotional reaction that humans have to horses and how fond we become of, of horses. Uh, the eye, as I was saying before, is uh, probably a big part of that. But I also think it's this idea of the mane, you know, it just really reminds us of human hair. The way where it's located and the way it sort of flops down across the forehead. It is uh, no wonder that we have uh, had this sort of emotional reaction uh, to horses for so many centuries because... I think that hair really does sort of remind you of a human hairstyle almost. Now I'm going to take this initial guideline, the, the top of the head, and sort of erase it away so that I can uh, begin to add the rest of the mane, you know, which may indeed come so high up here that it nearly touches that first line. Of course, all of this is, you know, you can feel free to invent your own hairstyle. If you wanted to have the hair blowing in the wind dramatically, you could do all kinds of stuff. Um, but you can see I'm doing a kind of just the hair is just flowing down in a, in a relaxed way across the uh, top of the forehead. And then, of course, the ears are poking through that mane. So uh, you continue on the other side of the ear, like so. And again, I think different breeds of horses probably have different length of mane. You know, I saw some photos where the hair was flopping all the way down in front of the horse's eyes and stuff like that. Um, I've sort of settled on an in-between uh, moderate length of hair for the horse's mane. And yeah, this, uh, uh, I'm starting to head out of the video frame at this point, and I'll probably go ahead and finish up. I think you should feel very free when you get to this part of the main to, you know, don't follow what I'm doing. Do whatever you feel like doing, whatever looks nice in your uh, version of the drawing. Now it is time to move on to one of the hardest parts, and that is to start to grapple with this really quite subtle structure across the whole... Um, bridge of the nose or the snout of the uh, horse 
uh, is it the muzzle? I never know the words for things. That whole area in there, it becomes quite subtle in terms of the uh, muscles and even a bit of visible uh, vein work that you'll see in certain areas. Let's go ahead and refocus the camera. Now I'm embarrassed to say that I must have forgotten to put in a line for the other side of the horse's neck. <laughs> a lot of people watching this like, dude, what about the other side of the horse's neck? It would come in here, right? Like I said, that sort of letter J shape that we uh, created, maybe not quite halfway across, a little closer to the front. That's where I'm going to put that, uh, uh, the other side of the neck. Boy, talk about forgetting things, Curly. Come on. Uh, get with the program. Now I'm going to get into this area of, uh, like I said, there's uh, musculature that comes across here. Now you see I greatly lightened up these lines that were here to begin with um, uh, because they really were just sort of guidelines. And what I want to show you is an area right in here where you're going to begin to see veins. I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, just almost freehand, throwing in some lines. It's right around here, this area. Um, between the eye and the nostril, but not leading all the way to the nostril, is where you might see uh, almost like a little road map of veins. And I'm guessing that every horse is going to have its own unique um, structure, vein structure in this area, but I did see on quite a few photos that this is the area where those veins become visible. And, you know, it looks a little extreme here, like I'm going to be drawing him with this <laughs> vein problem. Uh, but this is, a lot of this is going to get erased away as we begin adding shading later on. This, what you can do is take this first area where that line was, you know, that went straight uh, across there. Once you get this, the vein structure in place, you can begin to sort of, instead of that being a line, you can begin to turn that into an area of shading that extends from the eye, sort of beneath the, uh, hang on a second, I'm going to try to erase away even a little bit, because this is where we're going to try to keep this area white, where the vein is kind of popping out in front of it. And then you are going to continue down here, and then this begins, uh, not in a super straight way, it maybe curves off a bit. And this whole area in here, it really it begins to split into areas of rather subtle, uh, shading that I'm going to have to do uh, in time lapse later on. But um, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll add just a bit more shading in here to show you how that the veins are going to kind of come in front of this area of shading. And then across the the muzzle, the snout, the upper, the bridge of the nose, you're going to see at least one or two areas of shading. Uh, again, it's all because of structural stuff beneath the skin, muscles. Um, there's a, I've seen some, in some of the photos, a bit of darkness right here around this sort of upper eyebrow uh, muscle area. Uh, and then let's come down here to where the, this area of flesh around the nostril uh, goes, and then we can begin to just get a little bit of a subtle area of uh, shading there. I wouldn't connect these lines as a single thing, you know, have, have them become tr um, separate, because there's really several different areas here uh, that you're going to be creating um, to, to suggest the uh, several strands of muscles that go across that area. Now, uh, before I forget, let's get another hint of the eye here, and perhaps more importantly even the eyelashes on this side that are pointing off uh, in that direction. Boy, hang on a second guys, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit because I feel like I didn't quite show that. Hopefully you saw that there, the, uh, adding the uh, eyelashes pointing off in that direction. Uh, you don't really see much of the eye uh, from, from where we are here. Uh, and then the final thing that I want to do is just do a little bit of shading down here in this area of the nostril. Not very much light is going to get all the way back in here. Um, and the, So you want to add some darkness there. And uh, I saw in some photos at least a little bit of structure coming off of this lower uh, part of the nostril, sort of supporting it a bit here, and uh, I'm afraid we may be coming down to the end of things. Uh, there is uh, further musculature in this area um, that uh, is, again, quite subtle, and you're going to see me building this up gradually. Can't do it all real time, sadly, but this whole area here, again, depending on the breed of the horse, you can see uh, a fair amount of um, musculature 
in a sort of a diagonal fashion going up towards this back area which uh, this whole area becomes its own sort of rounded area with not too much in the way of the these sort of muscle lines this becomes a smoother area right over here and you're gonna see me do that almost entirely in time-lapse and I would say hey there's almost no time like the present except that uh, I think we do have to talk about the muscles of the neck here and rather than refocus <laughs> I'm just gonna move my tripod over here uh, on the fly so that you can see um, how I would begin adding uh, the muscles at the back of the neck here. The, of course, a, a horse's neck is really quite sinewy and, and very powerful looking, I think, really, uh, because of all the muscles that are supporting the head. Uh, but I'm going to get at least um, two uh, big diagonal lines in here that uh, give me a sense of where I'm going to add the shading. I think because of the light situation you're going to see a whole area in here that gets covered in with shade and then of course uh, we really haven't uh, focused properly for it but this area over here is where you're going to see the rest of the main uh, as I said uh, feel free to draw it any way you like the hair could be flopping in any number of directions and I think that does bring us to the point where I'm going to start doing all of the shading in time-lapse we're going to bring in old man time lapse. I kind of have a, a voice that sounds like I like horses, but the truth is they frighten me. Uh, in any case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and in time lapse with the help of old man time lapse. Uh, finish off this entire drawing. You're going to see me do a lot of shading. I'm going to pull out my uh, trusty black Prismacolor, a simple black colored pencil uh, to finish everything off. I might do just a little bit of um, white gouache at the end, but otherwise we are pretty much done with this video. Let's go ahead and finish up the shading and I'll be back with a few final words. I think we're at the end of it. I decided at the end that I didn't really need to use uh, white gouache, although I did pull out a nice clean eraser to uh, make sure that those veins would stand out against the somewhat grayed out background. Um, but before I sign off, I always like to thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Two Pencil Method. That's the book that contains the type of illustrations that you saw in this video, 30 different lessons. Uh, there, the drawing lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and of course the Mastering Manga series. Uh, just found out that there's going to be a uh, uh, Russian version of the Mastering Manga uh, books. That's kind of a thrill. I haven't had books published in that language until now. But let's go ahead and lay down my pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.